Chapter 21, The Murder. As soon as Noah reported back to Fagin, the old man immediately sent for Sykes and told him the whole story about Nancy's midnight meeting on the bridge. Sykes was enraged as he raced home and into the bedroom where Nancy lay asleep. He grabbed her by the throat and dragged her to the floor. What's wrong, Bill? What have I done? She gasped. As if you don't know, you were followed tonight. Every word was overheard. Then spare my life as I spared yours. And Fagin's cried the girl clinging to him. Listen to me. The gentleman and the lady offered to send me to a good home in a foreign country. Let me ask them to do the same for you. We could leave here forever and start a new life. She held on him so tightly that it was a great effort for Sykes to loosen her grip. He finally freed one of her hands and reached for his pistol. He realized, however, that the shot would attract attention and he'd be caught. So instead, he brought the pistol down with all of his might on Nancy's head. She staggered and fell, blinded by the blood from the gash in her forehead. With her final breath, she pled for mercy, but Sykes covered his eyes with his hand, grabbed a heavy club, and struck her dead. Sykes sat for hours, staring at her body. Finally, when the sun's rays entered the room, he roused himself and slowly got up. He lit a fire, and when it was burning brightly, he threw the club into it. Then he washed the blood off himself and off his clothes. He didn't dare stay there, stay there any longer, so he locked up the house and set out with his dog. He walked for miles, out of London and into the country, his dog trotting at his side. At nine o'clock that night, he came to a town where he hoped to stop and rest. He saw a mail coach standing before the little post office. All the people were gathered around it, talking about a murder in London. This was not a safe town for a murderer to rest in, so Sykes decided to go back to London. Maybe he could get lost in the big city. Maybe he could even wangle some money from Fagin to escape to France. First, however, he had to get rid of the dog in case any descriptions were out for a man with a dog. He tried to put a rope around the dog's neck to drown him in a pond, but the animal, sensing the plan, ran across the fields. And Sykes continued the journey alone.